Hey, what's up, y'all? I hope you guys are doing well. I have a message for you today, and it's titled, His Name is Emmanuel. I want to start by reading in Matthew verse chapter 1, verse 18. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the, pro the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Father, I thank you to, for today. I thank you for the opportunity to be here to, to speak before your people. I pray, Lord, that this message would encourage them, Lord Jesus. And we know that you're with us. We know that you're guiding us. We know that you're leading us. We thank you in Jesus' name. I want to highlight that last verse, verse, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Uh, God sent his prophets long before Joseph even found out that Mary was pregnant. And they were already proclaiming that his name was to be, or that they would call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God sent his angel to Joseph to proclaim a word or a message that was for the ages. It wasn't just for Joseph. It was for everybody. It was to declare, it was to announce that his, his name uh, would mean that he would be with us. I, I, want, I want you to, to remember today that no matter what, at all times, that God is with us. And, you know, his name became so much a part of who he was, he lived up to his name. Um, he wasn't um, just a regular somebody that, that didn't live up to his name. Jesus was who he was named to be, who he said he was, and who God meant for him to be. I'm so glad that we have the promise that, that he gave, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. That no matter what, that if we make our bed in hell or our bed in heaven, that, that he would be with us. You know, there's an old saying that says, uh, you make your bed, you're going to have to lie in it. And I'm so glad that no matter what, whether we make our bed uh, in this place or that place, that God is still with us. By his grace, the spirit of Jesus is right there with us. He's He's always available for, for you to turn to. Uh, because he is always for you. He's rooting for you always. There's never a moment while there's breath in your body that God will not turn, uh, 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 that he will turn you away if you so decide to believe in him. He said that he'd be with you always in your coming and going, that he'll be with you in, your, in the good and bad, that he would be with you in the stupid decisions that, that we make and the life altering decisions that we make, that he is with us no matter what. I came to tell somebody today that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus embodied his name. You know how some people name their kids Mercedes and they look like a Pinto or they name their baby Beauty and you wonder why? Because they look more like Beast. They name their baby Prince and they look like something else. Uh, Jesus lived up to his name. He was everything and, and every part of what... Uh, what Jesus, what the Holy Spirit named him. He was Jesus Christ, son of the living God. The words that were prophesied ages ago is still true today. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And the thing that, that makes me happy on top of all of that is, is, is what I found in Psalms chapter 91. I want you to turn there now, if you have your Bibles with you. Starting in verse 9, I actually came across this this scripture, because I woke up in a dream, and 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 um, Psalms ninety one was was in my dream, and so I turned there the next morning, and and what God revealed to me was something that was so over overwhelming that I, 
I, I, I'm supposed to be working, but I just had to take a minute and, and spend some 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 time with God. So I want to to lay this out for you so that you can get an understanding of, of what it is that I want to get across to you today or what the Holy Spirit wants to get across to you today. Starting in verse nine, it says, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The verse that stuck out to me the most was in, in verse 14, when he says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. What does it even mean to acknowledge? It means to recognize. It means to ascribe to. It means to associate with. It means that when you think of him, you also are thinking that he is the son of God, that his name is Jesus, that he is the Christ, that he is the son of God. It's, it's, it's meaning that you acknowledge everything about who he is. The world tells me that, that if I acknowledge him, that he will be. If I believe that he's a healer, he'll be my healer. If I believe if I believe he's a way maker, he'll be my way maker. If I believe he's a refuge, he'll be my refuge. If I believe he's my fortress, he'll be my fortress and my protector and my provider and my father and my sustainer and the one who brings me joy and the one who is a firm foundation upon which I stand, the one who opens doors, the one who leads my family, the one who makes or helps me make decisions, he'll be all of that. If I believe that he is, he will be. You have to acknowledge that he is and he will be. God tells us in his word that we must come to him believing that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you believe he'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory and hold on to that truth, the fruit of that word will be that God will have met your every need. And, and, and I want you to realize that He's going to meet the need like he desires to meet the need, not how you want him to meet the need, but how he wants to meet the need. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. I got to get that to you this morning, that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. He is always with us. He's 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 a ride or die kind of God. As a matter of fact, he did just that for you. He's going to be with you no matter what. The problem with the world is that they can't see him because they don't know him. They don't know because they haven't been introduced to him. They don't know that he'll be with them and, and what that even means. The world doesn't know because the world doesn't believe. They haven't tasted and seen that he is good. I came to tell somebody today that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Let me introduce you to Jesus Christ. He is the son of the living God. And if you believe in him, you have everlasting life and he'll be with you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll make his home within you. He'll help you. He'll guide you. He'll favor you. He'll reveal his purpose with in you. He'll make you a new creation. He'll restore uh, 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 all the lost years that you came across. He'll renew your mind. He'll refine your character. He'll, he'll make you a witness. He'll be the answer through you. This is Jesus. He's the one who will be with you always to the end of time. He'll empower you. This is what happens when Jesus is with you and when you're with Jesus. He is forever with us. He hasn't left you stranded. He hasn't left you alone. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's concerned about you. He has, he is ever thinking about you. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for you right now. The Spirit of God is whispering to you. His presence is comforting you. His presence is filling you up with joy. If you believe he is, he will B. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. In all that I do, 
God is with me and he is with you. He's never let me down. He hasn't forgotten about me, even though sometimes I feel like he has. Sometimes I feel like he hasn't said a word. Sometimes I feel like he is far from me. But I know because his word tells me that he is with me and that he'll never forsake me. He has he still knows my name. He still knows your name. I came to encourage somebody that if you feel that God has forgotten about you, he hasn't. He's still with you. He's right there beside you. And maybe you need to get along with Jesus and, 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 and sit in his presence. You don't need to do anything else. Just sit in his presence. Worship him. Give him the, the fruit of your lips. Sing songs of praise to him and you'll find him. You'll sense his presence. You'll, you'll know that he is with you. In the name of Jesus, you are still his child. Sometimes you have to just get alone. You have to just get alone and, 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 and find him. You have to realize, you know, the Bible tells us to, to be still and know that he is God. Sometimes we have to just be still and realize who he is. As we're worshiping God, sometimes I, that's all I do is just Get alone and worship him. Sing songs of praise. And, and I'm reminded of his goodness. I'm reminded of his kindness. I'm reminded of his love. I'm reminded of all that he is, that he is Lord of lords and that he's king of kings and that he's fighting for me and that he and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he is for me. He's not against me. And I want you to know that today, that God is with you. He's still fighting for you. Uh, he is with you. I want, I, I, I'm praying that, that, that you find a place that you find space for Jesus for in your day and in your life that you know that he is with you and that he's never left you. Sometimes you just have to get alone and know that he is, he is God, that he is Emmanuel. I know that the storms come and uncertainty happens and that life happens and, and sometimes you want to slap folks, but I want you to always remember who he is and, and who you, to, and who you believe him to be. Listen to me. Who you believe him to be is what he will be in your life. Let him reveal to you who he is. Let him open up your eyes. Maybe that's that should be your prayer today. God, open my eyes. Let me see you. I want to know you and for who you are, who you say you are, not who I think you are, not who I profess you to, to be, but I want to know you, who you say you are, what the word says you are. Uh, reveal to us, God, who you are. Let us know you and the fullness of who you are. We want to know the breath. We want to know the depth of who you are. We got to know you, Jesus. We got to know you, Jesus. Jesus, I got to tell you about a story. When Jesus was in a boat sleeping, the, the winds were blowing, the, the, the waves were raging, and the disciples went and woke Jesus up. They had to go wake him up because they thought they were going to drown. In the story, I recognized a few things, and I want, I want you to know today. The first thing that, that jumped out at me was that Jesus cared enough to be bothered. Don't ever think that you're not supposed to ask for help. Don't ever think that God wants you to walk alone. Don't ever think that you are not welcome to come before Jesus. We, he tells us in his word that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Don't be afraid to go and bother to, to go and bother Jesus. Don't be afraid to go <clears throat> and see about him. And just because it may seem like a, a rebuke or it may seem like he's chastising you, uh, he chastises those he loves. So, so be glad about it. If he corrects you, be glad about it. If he uh, 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 is, is trying to get you, he told his disciples, why, why? Where's your faith at? You have so little faith. But even that was a message of love. Number two, he used it as a teaching moment about their faith. God will use everything, everything to help you grow. Anything that you're going through, a storm, he will use it to help you grow. I know it may not feel like it. I know you may not agree. Maybe not. Maybe so. But he'll use everything to help you grow. 
Number three, he revealed his power by rebuking the storm. The power comes from God. The miracles that happen are because of God, because he decides when and how his power shows up. Um, this is like I talked about earlier. God is the one who's exercising his power. It's not us. We don't have the power. God has the power. And what he decides to do, when he decides to do it, and how he decides to do it is his, is his prerogative. It's, it's, it's up to his choosing. And we have to be okay with that. We have to know that his will is perfect, that his way is perfect. And number four, Jesus got the glory. As believers, we have to continually point to Jesus. We don't want to be glory thieves and try to take the credit for anything. All that God does in and through us, he gets the glory. We're not smart enough. We don't have the right connections. We don't know the ins and outs. But we know that when we call on the name of Jesus, when we lean on him and trust him, we know that he will get the glory. You may feel like you're about to drown, but I want you to know that Jesus is in the boat with you. And all you have to do is wake him up. All you have to do is go see about him. Go nudge him. You may think it's weak to run to God when you're in trouble. You may think that it's a sign of unbelief. But if you run to him, it means that you know he can do something about your situation. Faith is what gets the attention of God. And if you believe that he is, he will be. I'm going to keep saying it today. If you believe that he is, he will be. Jesus was asking his disciples one day on another account. Who do men say that I am? They gave different responses, but then he asked Peter, who do you say I am? Jesus wasn't looking for confirmation. He wasn't looking for affirmation because he knew who he was. He knew where he came from. He knew the power that was within him. He wanted to know the beliefs of his disciples. He wanted to know what they believed so that he could be the Messiah through them. He wanted to know what they could believe so that he could be the son of the living God in and through them. Maybe God is posing that question to you today. Who do you think he is? Who do you know him as? Some say this, some say that, but who do you know him to be? I want you to know as a prophet said long ago, that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to rise again and ascend into heaven. And when you believe, he makes his home within you. He makes you a new creation and you are his. And when he went to heaven, he sent another. He sent his spirit to guide you, to empower you, to lead you into all truth and to comfort you. You're never alone. God is with you. And I hope you find comfort knowing that God didn't leave you, that he'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. He sent a helper for you. He sent a spirit here for you, that if you believe, you shall receive his spirit. If you believe, he will be. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Father, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being Lord over our lives. We thank you for being the Son of God, the true and living God. We know that your name is Jesus. There's power in your name. There's healing in the name. We call on your name, Jesus. There's, there's, there's safety in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call on your name today because we know who you are. You are Christ, the Son of the living God. You are true. You are alive, God. And we thank you for being God in our lives. We thank you for being uh, our, our fortress and our refuge and our safe place. We thank you for being our comfort. We thank you for being our hope and our help. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you, Father God, for leading and guiding us, Father. I pray, Father God, that there was peace in every person's life that is watching today. I pray, Father God, that as, as we embark upon this Christmas season, that people will, will know you, Father God, and know that you are with them each and every day, no matter what the day is going on, no matter how they feel, no matter the situation, you are with us in Jesus' name. Y'all have a blessed day.